Mailbag time. What's up, everybody? Hope your weekend's going great. I'm Adam Azer with Jamie Eisenberg and Nicolas Cage superfan Dan Schneier <laughs> here on a Friday afternoon. It's getting tougher to come up with nicknames for Dan. Jamie, good to have you back on the mailbag, my man. What's up? It's good to be here. I miss you guys. I know you know this is the most fun show, right? We love we love the mailbag. We get to do it. Course, anything no, with Dan is the most fun show. Uh, uh, thank you, Jamie. <laughs> love it. You said Adam, right? No, no. Adam. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Dan, greetings. How, how are things in in Schneier's fantasy world? Not very good, Adam. A lot of hectic energy going on right now. Nervous. There's an, an absolute disaster went down in my league this week, and we'll talk about that on today's show. Yeah, right freaking now. The fantasy cops are here to help one of our own. Internal Affairs is looking into this. All right, Dan's got some issues in his home league. What's happening? Let me set the stage here. I'm the commissioner. It's year 16 of the home league. 70% of the original members of the league are still members in the league. It started as a salary cap, what formerly known as auction draft, in 2007 has remained that way, but it is a keeper salary cap draft, which means each year you still get the $200 budget, but the prices of the players you draft the year before go up by 10% the first year. And we've made it, we've changed the rules to the point where you now no longer can keep someone basically for two years. So just as important to note, it's basically a one year keeper. So it's not a dynasty of any form, really. There is one dynasty player, but he goes up by 50% average of the top three. So it's hard to do anyway, throughout our 16 years until this year, we've never had an issue with tanking. We've had some issues with trades in the past, like Calvin Johnson, who was the best receiver at the time, was traded for like a $6 Mike Williams on Tampa, and then Mike Williams wasn't a keeper, and the guy who traded for Calvin Johnson won the league. We used to allow keeper trades where you could trade for next year's dollars, but that really screwed up the balance of the league. One year, somebody traded Colston for like 6 bucks, and the team who got Colston won the league. We've never had an issue of tanking, though. So this year, Adam, something happens this week. One of the league Jamie? and Jamie. Jamie. Yeah. No, this is for both. I just, <laughs> I want, I'm very interested to hear both of your opinions, not only on what I should have done as commissioner, but if what, if what I did was wrong and a lot, <laughs> there's a lot going on here. There's so All many right. moving parts. So this week there's a team managed by our friend, Scott Yanofsky, and he's a sharp dude. He owns his own real estate company, Elite Realtors in New Jersey. And one of the things they've done is give the highest commission to a realtor. So he knows how to like get deals done and he's got sales experience, but He's also someone who loves chaos. He loves bringing chaos to the league. He loves when people are like mad at him. He loves when people are talking about him. He loves the attention. No matter if it's negative attention, he actually says he likes negative attention more. And so he, at two and three, Jamie and Adam, at just two and three, decided, I am going to tank. I am going, I have no interest in trying to win this year. So he's taking Kimberly Martin's advice and doing yes. the Giants. Do. He's <laughs> taking Kimberly Martin's advice, but even worse, because. It's not a dynasty league. You can only keep these guys basically for a year. But he, in his mind, what we allow in the offseason is you can keep three players, but you can also trade your excess for draft dollars in the offseason. So you're allowed to trade for draft dollars in offense. Let's say you have three good keepers, but you also have like Jerry Judy for two bucks. You can trade him to another manager for three bucks, and then that, you add that to your budget before the draft. So only in the offseason can you trade draft dollars. So in his mind, it made more sense for him to try to get every possible potential keeper asset so he can either trade or keep them over trying to remain competitive. So it starts off with Tuesday night. I'm recording my Giants podcast. Shout out Big Blue Banter for those Giants fans listening to the show. I had to do it. And I get a slew of texts during the show, just ruining my flow of the show. It was a terrible situation to begin with from that standpoint. People angry texts just over and over and over again. The first of the tanking drops. It's basically Damian Pierce, who was drafted at $12 and can be kept for $17 for Saquon Barkley. That's the start of it. But he also gets uh, Jameis Winston and Barkley. So a quarterback in a, in a super flex league where quarterbacks are valuable. So that's the start of it. Then we get the next ball to drop, which is he. This is the same manager doing the same trades. He trades Mike Evans for Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith's five dollars can be kept at six dollars, or not Mike Evans. Sorry, uh, CD Lamb, CD okay. Lamb for Devontae Smith. That's the closest one to being yeah. somewhat okay. Then it gets worse. He trades. He trades for James Cook, who hasn't done anything yet. Maybe can do something next year. And he's going to be five dollars. That's not as important. They're all kind of in the same range. Travis Etienne and DJ Moore for James Cook. Then after that, he says, and throughout this, he's sending text messages to the group chat. And by the way, let me preface this by saying this: our league, and this is important to note, 
Our league is very, very, very against making any kind of rule change in season. We've had massive arguments. I had a debate once. See, somebody picked, drop, picked up TK Hobbinson after he was dropped or something, and it's been, always been a rule that you can't do that. Turned into like a 72-hour debate where people are firing off on emails, the group chat's going nuts. So people are very against changing rules in season, and everything he's done so far is per the rules. He's essentially not breaking any rules. So then he says, I still have Kyle Pitts. I still have Justin Fields. It's two quarterback league. Anybody want them? I'll give them away for any. He's basically giving away for anything. So he finishes it off by trading those two for, I think, like Kenny Pickett and like Rashad White, which actually is also not that terrible. Um, so then this happens and this goes down. People are furious, but it's not over. Now, a manager who's actually 0 and 5. So remember, this guy was 2 and 3. He still has a chance to win. And he was the guy who, has, who drafted Ken Walker. So he was going to get the Ken Walker boost to his roster. But now the team 0 and 5 is so pissed off. He's like, I can't believe this. I, 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 the, the, the league integrity is completely ruined now. There's n this is what he said. He said, The league integrity is ruined now. I should have done this. I should have just got all these best keepers. But by this point, there are really no more keepers left to be traded for the most part, all the potentially good ones. And it's hard to predict at this point, who's going to be a good keeper in August of 2023, how we value these guys. Right. But he's like, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm tanking my whole team. I'm dumping my whole team. But by this point, the teams that are not in contention have the best keepers. Like one team has Olave cheap, um, Drake London cheap and, Deshaun Watson cheap in a super flex, but he's also doesn't want it. To, he wants to keep those guys because he's not winning right now. And so this guy who's now 0 and 5 is like, that's it. I'm taking my entire roster. And so he's, and, but there's no one left. So he texts me and he offers me Jonathan Taylor and De and my choice of Derek Carr or Russell Wilson for, and all these guys are cheap. Jamison Williams, <laughs> Christian Watson, and Sky Moore. You got to do so, it. So I, felt too bad about doing all that but i also at the same time i'm in a moral dilemma i'm the commissioner but i also the two team i have the i had the best team going in my team hasn't really i'm like second or third in points because jamar chase has been great but there's two other major teams and those are the guys who got cd lamb and barkley the two main competitors for me so i'm like i can't fall behind here and decline this trade because if that happens and i don't do this trade someone else is going to do this this guy is desperate to tank right now this guy is just like i can't i need everything yeah. i can get i have no interest and so i'm like all right let's take out the quarterback from the deal that's just way too unfair and let's just make it jonathan taylor for those three rookies so i do that which is obviously not a great trade what are the rookies again jameson williams sky moore and christian watson for jonathan taylor for jonathan taylor and the league so, out. no it gets worse it gets worse this guy is now in full tank mode so then he's not it done yet it's, he's not done yet he ends up trading to another team who is actually doing bad. He was two and three, tenth in points, but he's like, you know what? I don't believe in keepers. And he's right. It's hard to predict keepers. Like people can be like, oh, Pierce is going to be such a good keeper. Jamieson Williams is not, but no one knows before August, 2023, how we're going to value these guys. But he's like, screw it. I'll just, I don't believe in keepers. I'll just go for one of these. And then this is this, I think this one's the craziest one to me. It might be the Taylor one. Some people might think, but he finally, the tanking team, the second tanky team finally trades Dalvin Cook, I'm reading it right now. Derek Carr, Russell Wilson, remember, super flex week. Dalvin Cook, Derek Carr, Russell Wilson, and Devin Singletary for Ramondre Stevenson, who's eight bucks and can be kept at 10. Uh, Hunter Renfro, who's like nine bucks, can be kept at 11. Baker Mayfield and Daniel Jones at $8. Oh, no, that's really bad. <laughs> oh, my. And so we now have two teams that have completely Not tanked. Even appealing. There's like one appealing keeper in there potentially in Stevenson. That is right. total BS. So there's now two teams that have completely tanked. There's a bunch of super teams that fell behind. And so my question was to you guys, one, should I have changed the rules? In, should I have just said, screw everyone and all your complaints? I'm going to finally make the decision to change a rule in season and just fi figure out a way to stop the tanking before it even began or even at some point through the tanking. Two, should I have not accepted that trade or should I, should I have just accepted the original trade with Carr and, and, and uh, or Russell knowing if I didn't do it, someone else was going to do it. And three, rank the trades from worst to. No, to I can't, I can't okay. comprehend all of the trades. Okay. The last one was the worst one. The last one was the worst, right? Did That's they what do I did. Wrong? What'd you say? Did they do anything wrong? Did, yeah. That's the question. Did anyone do anything wrong by the rules? They didn't. But at the same time, is the league Okay. If this type of thing happens where two teams are now completely tanked, they're just going to try to fill their rosters through free agency. And one guy who was four and one, but was traveling shout out Scott Levine. 
sends me the most angry text ever last night. He gets home, sees everything that happened, and he's like, this is ridiculous. I thought this league was competitive. This is the most BS Bush League thing I've ever seen. This is worse than some of my home leagues. He's like threatening now to drop his whole team if he falls out of contention. And he's like, I'll just drop my whole team and pick up any long shot moonshot of a rookie. Why not? That's what everyone else is doing. So it's turned into an epic disaster where two teams are completely bottomed out. They're super teams now. And it's just a disaster. What do you do, JB? Uh, I think you have to let it go for now and make it clear that at the end of the season, there needs to be a revisit or you need to revisit the, the keeper slash trade rules in the league, you know, and, and what sort of scale should be decided and how trades can be you know, made in this, in this type of format. Yeah. We had a situation with my fantasy basketball leagues where it was getting to a point where teams that were out of contention were trading players for draft picks and we had to amend it where you couldn't trade for a first or second round pick that it had to be where these guys were drafted versus where the the, the compensation was and it, it sort of put the league back in balance a little bit um you know and and it's it's frustrating at times because you know you, you're giving up you know a team that stinks you're giving up a team you know a, a star player but we just kind of made it where you couldn't trade certain players in certain ranges because it was just making the league too you know every year it'd be the team that that is is out of it next year is is dominant because they're just right. getting all these draft picks and keepers so mm. yeah, there are ways around it but it's uh so we tried to move up the trade deadline it used to be like week nine we we thought moving it up to week six would prevent any team from ever deciding to tank no yeah. one's ever tanked in league history but this team at two and three said i don't care i don't believe in my team and i'm just going to take everything i can possibly get for next year yeah, but he, it was almost like he was just trying to prove a point. You know, it wasn't even. I, oh, he is definitely strategy, the type you know? that he is uh, definitely the type that league was, integrity. I, I, that's I the think, problem. You know, I it's hard to just put a rule in there, though. Should I have done it, anything while it was going on or to prevent it before it was happening? Because he did threaten like have, earlier this season to go to the league and said, listen, like this league has been going on for 16 years and this has never happened. Never happened. You know what you're doing is wrong. It may not be against the rules. Just like Doug Peterson tanking in week 17 a few years ago. But you know it's wrong. So don't do it. You know, you could have done something like that, but I you were you were a little powerless. These these are bad actors. I think, <laughs> you know, I, I think that, you know, you just let everything slide and make it and come up with a consensus rule for next year. Should uh, I have taken sense. should I have taken Carr and and no, or the right thing. should you I do. even have taken Taylor? Or should I have just yes. let other teams build? That wasn't even that crazy of a trade. Like that, they, that's, I think that's fine. And someone said you had too much Oreo cream this morning. That's every that's every morning. <laughs> All right, you ready to start the show now? Let's yeah. do some news and notes here. Uh, update you on what's going on in the uh, in the uh, fantasy football world. Jonathan Taylor and Naeem Hines both practice. We're hoping to get both of them back this week. And we're hoping to keep them on our fantasy team instead of trading them for spare parts. <laughs> T. Higgins practice, but uh, yeah, he's in walkthrough, walk through. Through, walk through. So it wasn't uh, you know great news for Higgins. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. Uh, Kyle Pitts questionable, but we expect him to play. Uh, Mac Jones questionable. Nick Bosa questionable. Looks like Wandale Robinson is going to play. I wouldn't say that exactly, but he's trending in the right direction. Probably more of a stash than a start, but he's owned in about 9% of a roster, pardon me, in about 9% of CBS Sports leagues. So you can take a look at Wandale Robinson as a guy to stash. PJ Walker is officially starting. No Shaq Leonard or Quiddy Pay for the Colts. Two key defensive players for them against the Jaguars. But as long as they have DeForest Buckner, their run defense should be pretty darn good. Good news for Aaron Rodgers. First of all, Matt, Matt LaFleur does not think his thumb will be an issue, but left tackle, left tackle David Bakhtiari, who didn't play much last week. He's practiced all three days this week for the first time this season. They get the Jets this week. Cleveland's going to be without two key defensive players, Denzel Ward and Jadeveon Clowney. Rashad Bateman likely out. Gus Edwards nearing a return, and the Buccaneers are going to be without Akeem Hicks, Logan Ryan, and... Sean Murphy bunting this week. So that's two. Did you get? Did you see an update? I know they didn't practice today on Marcus Peters. I have not oh. seen a Peters update. No, I did not. I should know that. Does it matter? <laughs> it's like if you I mean, it, one it would game, help. This one, it would help. Yeah, he's obviously an important player for that. You keep so. poo-pooing Darius Slayton. I know you're, you're anti-Giants for everything, but <laughs> no, no, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, 
Uh, here's our terrible idea of the day from Andrew in a place outside of Tampa. More terrible than letting Dan open the show with a 20 minute rant about it. I didn't only. expect it to be that long. Yeah. It has to be like three or four minutes. So it was what? Like, it was entertaining. And 12 minutes is a little, it's a little long there. It's all right. Uh, he says, Dear Eddie, Dustin, Robin, and Steve. Hmm. Oh, that's that's Stranger Things. Ah, huh. uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Good call. Just a general thought I'd love to hear you all discuss in a Seinfeld voice. What's the deal with Fab? Isn't it annoying when you bid, say, $16 on a player and the next closest bid is $5? Don't you kind of feel like cheated out of 10 bucks? Why can't everyone just bid the most they're willing to pay and whoever bids the highest gets player X for $1 over the next highest bid? It was, uh, yeah, that's, he says basically that's what they do on eBay. So this to me is the terrible idea of the day. Jamie, what do you think about this idea? of just having to pay $1 more than the highest bid uh, in FAB. All right, so Ken Walker is available in your league, and everybody now wants to pick him up. So you would say, I guess the first person to be able to throw out the bid would be the person that's last in, in standings? No, everyone gets to throw out the bid. They're blind bids. Nobody sees them. But then how will you know you're bidding one more dollar than the next person? You don't. That That's the other problem here. It's like you could say, oh, I'm going to bid it. $80 on Jacoby Myers because the highest bid will be 12 and I'll just have to pay 13. But somebody else said, well, I'm going to do well, that. What would be the problem though? If, if, and just, I'm just thinking about this out loud. If instead of we did waivers, blind waivers, we did it as a salary cap draft. Right. Every, every, every week. Yeah. You could do that. That'd be fun. That'd just be interesting. Play. Yeah. That'd be pretty so interesting. It, it's, it's clearly a, a level play, a, a non-level playing field because not everybody's the same amount of money like you would in a, in a draft. But if you have, let's say, you know, you have 90, Dan has 80 and I have 70 and Ken Walker's available. And I say, I'm going to start at 60 uh, uh, as the number, not factoring everybody else, but we're the three guys that are going for him, three players that are going for him. You know, you can go to 71 and I'm done. Uh, yeah. But in this scenario, now, this scenario doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, I, I don't like the idea because this, you know, takes a little bit of the strategy out of your bids. I mean... You know what I, I find? Um, I have two leagues where I've never been this bad in fantasy before, two winless teams. And uh, one is waivers, one is salary cap. Maybe they're both salary cap. No, one is waivers, one salary cap. Um, it's, it's so much more challenging in salary cap, in, uh, in, in fab, to get back into it yeah. than it is on waivers. Yeah. So much more challenging. Right, and... You know, it's actually good for trash talk. And I say like, oh, man, I can't get any of the good players in this league because Darst is so bad. He gets them all every week. You know? It's <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, all right. Let's read some Apple podcast questions. I want to give a quick note to uh, Daniel from a town north of Dayton. Not going to have time to read your fantasy cops question, but you are not the jerk. Your trade was fine and your league mates need to get over it. Now, while DC says I'm in a two receiver non PPR league, and I need to use a wide receiver as a flex. So pick two of or pick three of these four. Jamar Chase, Chris Godwin, Gabe Davis, and Justin Jefferson. Who are you sitting? Chase, Godwin, Davis, Gabe Davis, or Jefferson? Non PPR. Davis, but I hate it. Yeah, Davis for me too. All right. You're not maybe sit Godwin with the you know the playing time. The snap count. Yeah. I just a good point. I just feel like I don't want to bench Godwin in this matchup. That Steelers secondary is such a disaster right now. Yeah. This is from Tyler is pretty great. 34. Grade the trade. I traded Kamara and Sutton for Brees Hall and CD Lamb. Kamara and uh, Sutton. And for Brees. Yeah, for Hall and this Lamb. It's kind of interesting. We we saw the poll of Mixon versus Hall rest of the season, and most of Twitter said Hall. Which most of Twitter is like 53%. 59%. Yeah, 59%. Uh, Adam just changing, <laughs> just just moving the percentages here. But uh, this one is a little different because we got receivers involved. <sighs> this is tough. I'd one. rather have CD Lamb than Sutton. I, I think that's for sure. That I'd rather have Kamara sure. than Hall. Yeah, it's. I think there's more upside with the Lamb Hall side. So I would go with the Lamb Hall side. There is more upside with that. Yeah. Let me see if I can find this Twitter. It doesn't here. mean it's the right choice. I just am an upside player. So. Right. I mean, look if 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 Russ gets right. And Sutton starts to find the end zone a little bit more consistently. He should be better than Yes. But you also have Dak Prescott coming back. And you have Russ going in the opposite direction from an injury. Oh, this is not what I thought. What the hell kind of tweet is this? (laughs) Tyler Lockett just tweeted a bunch of M's. 
What Maybe is... he's mad that his hamstring is bad. Ugh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> so, Tyler Lockett just pocket tweeted. All right. <laughs> pocket in the pocket. There nice. it is. Again, pocket. in case anyone wanted to see those random M's and numbers again. All right, this is from Maple Syrup Pup. Ooh. Pick one in full PPR. Romeo, D oh, well, you have some take about maple syrup, Dan? No, I love maple syrup, but you got to make sure it's actual maple syrup. There's a lot of faulty maple syrups that go around. Most places, you know, there's diners. You'll see it when you go up to Vermont. You actually have to pay extra for the good syrup, and it makes a big difference. Okay. <laughs> I keep that in mind. I've never been to Vermont. Oh, it's a great place. Pick one in full PPR. Romeo Dobbs, Deontay Johnson, or Kareem Hunt? Oh, wow. Hold on. Yep. Huge news. Oh, whoa. Sean McVay said Cam Akers will not play Sunday. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. So Daryl Henderson week? Apparently. Oh, yeah. Let's check. Uh, don't, punish, don't publish my sleepers column yet. <laughs> All right. Uh, Daryl Henderson is 79% rostered. Get him. I don't think he's rostered in any of my leagues, but I'm going to check. Where are you going to rank him? Uh, against the Panthers, oh, Daryl Henderson. I don't. I don't even love that. Uh, what am I? Where am I ranking against the Panthers? Top yeah. twenty. <laughs> I mean, I already had Acres in the top twenty-four. I thought it was going to be a good week for him. Mm, how about Eno Benjamin versus? Still Eno. Close though. I still don't trust the Rams' run game. They can't block. I don't know. They're ten and a half point favorites, though. I mean, they are. Yeah, the them. game. You're right. The game script is is the winning factor. They were right? five and a half point favorites last week, but this should be. No, that was a joke of a line, though. I didn't really think so. I thought. I mean, I probably would have taken Dallas, but it was only because the only reason the line was that way was because Cooper Rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's same thing this week. I feel like, and I like the Eagles, but Dallas is the best defense in the NFL potentially. No one's talking about that. Maybe the second or third best behind San Fran, but. That makes a huge difference in these games. I mean, the Rams, whatever. Let's get back on track here with Daryl Henderson. I'll put him inside the top 20 as well, just inside. Okay. And just behind, you know, Benjamin. Yeah, it's. I'm just looking at some of my leagues now to see if he's available and he isn't. I, how am he's I losing? So selfish. Yeah, I'm, I'm also. That is, <laughs> that is pretty I, selfish. Like, I'm looking at a score. I'm losing 27 nothing <laughs> After last night's game, after Thursday's game, how could you possibly? How is that be possible? Losing? Yeah, they started defenses. Somebody maybe had uh, super, Brian Robinson. super flex. They started Justin Fields. Um, Fields and McLaurin. So I've had a, I made a trade with uh, George Maselli in our magazine league that at the time I needed to. The last two weeks I've kind of regretted it. I traded. Uh, I had no receivers at all. Uh, it was when Mike Evans was suspended. Um, somebody else was hurt. The three receiver league. So I traded Clyde edwards hilaire and Brees Hall for C.D. Lamb and Daryl Henderson. Um, hmm. This was before pre started to clearly dominate the touches, and I thought Clyde was going to struggle a little bit. Um, but now <laughs> I feel a little bit better about that. Faker's going to miss some time. Yeah, man. Yeah, and they're it, yeah right. They're working through some personal things for for Cam Akers. So I hope everything is okay there. No. Nope. All right, let's get back on track here. Let's read some more questions. Uh, this is uh, did we answer this? No. Romeo Dobbs, Deontay Johnson, or Kareem Hunt? Uh, what's the format? Uh, the format the is one. PPR. I lead Deontay. Deontay's probably the right play, though, just based on the volume we saw last week that he got already. I'll change it to Deontay. It's fine. This is from BB State Baseball. Ball. Literally, like, love the banter. Literally, like talking football with your idiot friends. That's uh, is exactly how I feel. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel too. This is from. App I'm State. the main idiot here, but yeah, App State Aggie Slayers in a dynasty league. It is a one QB dynasty league. Struggling on whether to trade away Jalen Hurts. My team isn't really competing this year, but I have good pieces for next year. I have Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, and three first round picks next year. Ooh. I was offered Trevor Lawrence and a late first round pick for Jalen Hurts. I think you need more than that. What do you think, Jamie? Would you give up? Are you working on uh, some Henderson stuff? Yeah, I'll answer this one. Then I got to go. Is it, what, is it super flex or is it is it regular? No, it's not. Would you give up Jalen Hurts for Trevor Lawrence and a 2023 first round pick? Late in first round. Late first round, he says. In a super flex league? No, no, regular. No. Okay. 
I'm out. All right. Here. Well, Jamie, it was fun having you. Good seeing you, Jamie. Yeah, I, I want to hear more about Dan's uh, <laughs> league next time, and um, I can't really wait. Yeah, actually, you know what? Tell me a little bit more about it right now. <laughs> oh man, All I right. didn't think that was bad. I can't believe it. Was, it. Let's it was a we'll leave long. it to the listeners. We'll leave it, was it to the a listeners. Long. Yeah, you know. And you guys, I wanted more from you guys. I wanted some like more reaction. I would have liked to have given more, but they really it was just going on a little a little long there. But that's oh, okay. Right. You know what? Sometimes I it's it's a tough feeling because you know you, you sometimes miss sometimes. Like, yeah, I missed. You can miss sometimes in this job. Yeah, I, it, it, it happens. It's tough. You know, sometimes I do games and stuff like that. And they just end up being terrible. And, you know, it's okay. <laughs> you, you live and you learn. Yes. Uh, it, was a, it was a good story. It just was long. All right. Grade the trade from Travis. Standard what was that standard. seriously hair in the cookies, man, comment? David that? A. Seriously, the hair in the cookies, man? I guess he's just saying I'm the best because I have great takes on cookies and I have great hair. All right. Thanks, David. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, half of that is true. All right, grade the trade. Standard scoring. I traded James Robinson and J.K. Dobbins for A.J. Brown. He still has Henry Fournette and Gordon. Henry Fournette, Gordon is his RB depth. And Robinson and Dobbins for Brown. Oh, I like that trade. Yeah, it's a good one. That's a B plus. Yeah, A minus for me. Tom's burner. I want to move Hollywood Brown, Mike Williams, or both. Thoughts on potential trade targets for Hollywood Brown, Mike Williams, or both? Hollywood Brown, Mike Williams. Um, I guess he wants to move Mike Williams because of Keenan and Hollywood because of because of uh, Hopkins. I I don't have great targets for those guys. I would I really wouldn't move either of those guys personally. I'm not on that same bandwidth. I I understand why you're doing it because Keenan Allen will be back. Yeah, and DeAndre Hopkins will be back. I would look for um. Well, like I don't four, know. I like mean, a Fournette or something if you need a look, back, I guess. If, if 59% of people are taking Brees Hall over Joe Mixon, then I would make Hollywood Brown and or Mike Williams part of a package for Joe Mixon. You love yourself some Mixon. I, I mean, I, I love the guy who gets more touches than just about any any running back in football. That's fair. All right, this is from Zombie Vec. He's on the all-cream team. Thank you. Another yeah. guy on the right side of history. 12-team mm. single-flex half PPR league. Give up Mark Andrews and David Montgomery for Brees Hall and Michael Pittman. And he can get Taysom Hill to replace Mark Andrews. 12, 12 man, single flex, half PPR. He gives up Andrews and Montgomery for Bryce Hall and Pittman. Brees Hall. Brees Hall. Or Brees Hall, obviously, not Brice Hall. He wrote, um, it, but yeah. he wrote it, but still, it's, I should have known that. Another another miss by me. Not my best day. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't do that. I think Andrews gives you more of an advantage than any of those other two can give you on a weekly basis. And Montgomery is, as we've seen, Montgomery, even though <laughs> Khalil Herbert is unbelievably talented, Montgomery's still the guy in that backfield. So I wouldn't do it. All right, this is from Young Mart. Uh, dear Dansby, Austin, Ozzy, and Matt. Braves. Got an offer for Jeff Wilson for Cordaro Patterson and Dak Prescott. You knew that one, right? The Braves yeah. one? All right. Mm-hmm. I had a team named Dansby Samsonite in a fantasy baseball league. Not your best. Your best by far was Alex Menora. By far. Alex Menora. Maybe it's Alex Menora, sorry. It's maybe one of the best team names I've ever seen in fantasy <laughs> sports. You, did you even understand Dansby Samsonite? Um, there's not really no. Then, what, then you don't get to criticize. <laughs> it's a dumb and dumber reference when he's looking at he's looking for her name on her briefcase and he says Samsonite. He says, oh, oh, I was way yeah. off, and her name is Swanson. Yeah. Do you remember Matt Matt Shaw? But my best, my favorite team name I've had, and we can get back on track after this for Matt Shaw when I when I had him man or when a friend of mine had him, had him manage on his team Shabbat Shalom. Love it. Shabbat. Yeah. Uh, it's Shab though. It's not Shab. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, that's a Shab. good. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, all right, got an offer. Jeff Wilson. Right, would you rather have Jeff Wilson or Cordero Patterson and Dak Prescott? Wilson or Patterson and Prescott. Patterson and Prescott. From EP Junior, give up Christian Kirk for Josh Jacobs and Mark. In- oh, and oh, excuse me. Hold on. I have to sneeze. Would you give up Christian Kirk for Josh Jacobs? You know, all the time I would normally say no to this, and they did just mention this week, Doug Peterson's like, we got to get him back up to 10, 12 targets a week as far as Kirk goes. But I really like the tape from Josh Jacobs this year. He looks to me like the running back they drafted out of Bama. He looks to me like the running back that he flashed as a rookie. He's really decisive with his running this year. He's creating a lot more force missed tackles and a lot more yards after contact. And the film backs it up. So I And they don't really go to – I thought it was going to be more of a committee there. So I'm taking the Jacobs side. I'm back on Josh Jacobs. 
All right, we're going to come right back with some more Fantasy Cops about your leagues when we return on Fantasy Football Today. All right, baby, here we go. The Fantasy Cops are back, and we are settling marital issues now. (laughs) This one comes from Jeff from Dallas. My wife has asked me, or no, I'm sorry, let's do it again. My wife was asked to join her work fantasy football league. But since she doesn't care about football, I agreed to help manage the team. Another manager sent me a trade of their Brees Hall and Elijah Moore for my Curtis Samuel and Romeo Dobbs. Naturally, I accepted. Gave up Curtis Samuel and Romeo Dobbs for Brees Hall and Elijah Moore. Right. A day later, I see the trade was canceled by the commissioner, so I asked why, and this was the response I got. Quote, the trade was vetoed by other league members. Since we are a low-stakes work league and are here for fun, we tend to cut some slack to people that don't pay major attention to football or haven't played fantasy before. But if the original manager still wants to go through with it, she can resend and it'll be accepted. (laughs) Of course, I resent the trade and it wasn't accepted. I'm very annoyed since the trade was proposed to me and I want to say something back or send trades of my whole team to other teams so their accepted trades get vetoed. But it's my wife's work. (laughs) League and she doesn't want to finish <laughs> to affect work relationship makes sense oh but my what God. do i do jeff let me start by saying this is my favorite fantasy cops we've ever got mostly because of how it finished off of this is my wife's work yeah, yeah. i don't want this to affect her work relationship so put that forward that that is very important here I will say this. This is one of the most absurd things ever from the commissioner. The commissioner goes on to say, we're a low stakes work league. We're here for fun. But then they won't allow a trade that's not even that bad, like Dobbs and Samuel for Hall. Like, sure, you'd rather have the Hall side. Obviously, you're getting a good deal. That's not so bad. That's not crazy bad. And it's supposed to be low stakes for fun. Let it go through. And also, the the logic here, Adam, from the commissioner makes no sense to me. If she resends it, if you resend it and she accepts, we'll let it go through. What? Why? Well, it's I already mean, been accepted. Because she now knows that everyone else thinks it's a bad trade. But if she still okay. wants to make it. Okay. Okay. But yeah, it is kind of silly. You're right. If for it to be a low stakes, just for fun league, you should be encouraging people to make trades. Right. Right. Now, it's not guaranteed that Brees Hall and Elijah Moore side is going to be better with all trades. It's never a guarantee. Dobbs could really break out. Who knows? Like, it's just, yeah. I don't know. I hate Yeah. That. At least that's a little questionable. But don't do anything. Yeah. Don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Please don't do anything. <laughs> all right, Jeff. Take one for the team. This is from Brian. Dear Tony, Corey, and Jordan. Tony, Corey, and Jordan. This is just seems unfair. How are we ever going to get this? Ooh, Tony Soprano. Cool. Tony, Corey, and Jordan. Uh, is this? Oh, always sunny in Philadelphia, maybe. What? No. Tony. Yeah, I don't know what this is. All right. Anyway, here's the question: uh, the fantasy cops issue. Okay. Second week in a row that a manager of Brian Robinson will be leaving him in his IR spot wow. through Robinson's game. In most leagues I play in, the understanding is that the software will alert you, but not force you. Mm-hmm. So it's left up to the commissioners to contact managers and ask for compliance. How does the fo- podcast feel about this "quote unquote" legal tactic, leaving an IR player, in, leaving Brian Robinson in an IR spot, even though he's not no longer on IR? Yeah. So most leagues will uh, will not allow you to make a roster move until you take him out of your eye take a guy who's in your IR spot who's not actually on the IR out but if you don't make any roster moves you can kind of just leave it as is which it seems like this manager is doing I find it unfair I think that you kind of have to self-police it but then that gets into the problem of having leagues where you need commissioners who self-police and that's leads to kind of messy situations as well Adam so I don't really know what you do here you can tell the commissioner there has to be an understanding in the league that the commissioner steps in in these scenarios and, and makes these changes, right? It yeah, can't be I mean, it. it is up to the commissioners. The commissioners have to do it. And you, I guess, have to tell the commissioner. And if this manager already knew, if he'd already been called out once. Yeah, that's a problem, yeah. Then, then he should have to drop Brian Robinson, I think. Ooh, you know? I like that, yeah. If, if, he, if he already know, If people are asking uh, where Jamie is, the Cam Akers breaking news, uh, Jamie had to go. I don't know if he had to write something or what. He probably had to be on HQ is my guess. So um, that's where Jamie is. We did not kick him off the show. Jamie would never be kicked off the show. Okay. We've got uh, a couple. Oh. What? Oh, something happened with the Yankees. It's such a tough life for Adam as a Yankee fan, you know? 
All right. You know what Adam said before the show, you know, he criticized. Stop, he criticized stop, stop. No, you don't want me to say it out loud. It's so bad. I understand. Oh, I right. understand. This is from, uh, I don't have a name on this one. Sorry. Team A traded Devin Singletary to Team B for Greg Zerline. Whoa. Team A, by the way, is four and one. Team B is two and three. Team A traded Devin Singletary for Greg Zerline. Team A needs a kicker this week with oh. Daniel Carson on a bye, and he doesn't want to drop him. Team B needs a running back this week. Now, where it gets interesting, we have a rule that any player dropped to waivers at any point during the year is not eligible to be a keeper the next year. To avoid this and to keep Singletary eligible as a keeper next year, Team A traded him. Then, next week, these two teams have agreed to trade the players back. Oh, the trade back. The classic trade back. Yeah, what do you think? I'm very against trade backs. Uh, I don't think it's fair. I don't think they're fair for fantasy at all. I think there needs to be a rule. No trade backs. Am I just, you know, I don't follow kicker scoring that closely. <laughs> Is Daniel Carlson that good that he can't be dropped? <laughs> it depends on your I mean, league. Wow, he actually is having a pretty big year, huh? He is, but like that does not really has proven to not be predictable rest of season for the most part. Kickers are not really easy to predict. Um, look, he's been great. They didn't want to cut Carlson in. Some leagues are wild, Adam. I've seen some leagues. I play in a league now that I joined via some friends and it was a high buy-in league. Let me make that clear where it's like five point bonuses for every 50 yard kick. In addition to the five points you're already getting for the 50 yard kick. And so some, if it's one of those leagues, Carlson is ripping those 50 yard bumps. He's also hit like 37 field goals in a row. Carlson. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah so trade backs are a no for us. Fantasy cops hate yeah. them. We hate can't them. do it. All right. These are uh, some tweets. Let's fire through some tweets here. Okay. A- AJ Dillon or Travis Etienne. In this matchup, uh, Dylan. Start Tough. two. James Robinson, Kareem Hunt, Zeke, or A.J. Dillon? James Robinson, Kareem Hunt, Zeke, or A.J. Dillon? I'll go... <sighs> I'm going to go Hunt and Dillon. Dillon and Robin. Dylan and Hunt. Dylan and Hunt. Robinson, Flex I Next spot in PPR, A.J. Dillon or Zach Ertz? Dillon for me. I'm going to go oh, Zach PPR, Ertz. sorry. Ertz PPR. My bad. Uh, AJ Dillon or Romeo Dobbs have PPR. <laughs> Dillon. We got so many AJ Dillon. So many guys. Dillon. Yeah. All right. Non PPR. Pick two. Corey Davis, Brandon Ayuk, Josh Kelly, Romeo Dobbs. That's, mm, that's gross. I'm going to go Ayuk and Dobbs. Was Dillon in that? I feel like yeah. I, keep, I keep ringing in my head. Dillon. Oh, no, more Dillon. no more Dillon. No more Dillon. Okay. Uh, yeah, Dobbs and who? I like Dobbs. Sure. I think that's probably the best route. There's not a great option there. No. Uh, from Ruben, Raheem Mostert or Clyde Edwards Elayer PPR? Ooh, I'm going to go Clyde Edwards Elayer. I think there's going to be a ton of scoring in that game, and he was so close to scoring again last week. That's the only week he hasn't scored. Yeah, I am too. Don't underestimate the potential for Skylar Thompson to just be so bad that it takes the Dolphins out of their True. out of their game plan. Uh, Pitts or Taysom Hill at tight end PPR. Oh my God. We've reached that point of the season already and it's only week six. Uh, on Taysom Hill. I, I, I can't, can't believe I'm going to say Taysom Hill. You're saying Hill too. Yep. It's unbelievable. Hill Waddle or Pierce half PPR Waddle or, uh, oh, Alec or Damian Pierce. Pierce. Oh, Alec Pierce Waddle for me. I'll take okay. that. All right, I'll just yeah. the upside there is so much higher. Daniel Jones or Trevor Lawrence? <laughs> Lawrence. Isaiah McKenzie or Travis Etienne, PPR? Etienne. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Tough one it, for me. But I'm gonna tough. Go I just like Etienne's uh, trends. He's been going up in everything, snaps, target, everything you want to see. Time for some emails now. Fantasy football at CBSI.com. Most emails these days are grade to trade. Not a lot of starters sit, so just keep that in mind. Uh, this is from Jake in Brew City. Dear Eric, Hyde, Kelso, and Fez. That's um, That 70s Show. Correct. Am I right in thinking that you're a That 70s Show super fan? You are 100% incorrect. Oh. I, I like the show, but I don't know a single That 70s Show super fan. You kind of remind me in some ways of Eric on the show. I could see that. You could see I'm, that? I don't do that thing where they're in the room and the camera's going around in circles. Like That's not <laughs> Okay. Uh, I recently picked up Taysom Hill and Gerald Everett is available on the waiver wire. Would you drop either Hill or Dalton Schultz for Everett? I would not. No. Yeah. 
from James, 12-team non-PPR. Give up A.J. Dillon. Get back Michael Pittman, non-PPR. I would do it, yes. Would Just you from time it. Yeah, I would. Of course, you have the potential the of the Aaron Jones right. injury, and then this trade would be terrible, but yeah, <laughs> Uh, all right, from Timon. Hey, Marcus, Darren, Dennis, and Joey. Marcus, Darren, Dennis, and Joey. I mean, I don't know how people do these. I got like one right in my history of these shows. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oregon quarterbacks. <laughs> oh, yeah. I never would have gotten that. Marcus Mariota, Dennis. What was it? Dennis Dixon. Who were the other ones? I want to see. Joey Harrington and Darren. Don't, don't say the last one I was trying to get there. Who's Darren? Um, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I don't know. He's also from the hometown of the delicious custard coconut chocolate bar. Whoa, that actually sounds pretty damn good, but I have no idea where that town is. It's obviously in Oregon, I assume. It's based on that. That sounds story. terrible. I, coconut is, is one of my least favorite foods. Oh, don't. Pay, you're delivering a take like that. <laughs> you're an anti coconut guy. Why? Oh, you're very anti coconut. Oh just like, you don't enjoy a good pina colada? No. First, first I don't drink. And no, no, no there's virgin pina coladas too. Oh, who's gonna order a what am I in the Bahamas and I'm 14 years yeah. old? Gonna order a, uh, yeah, so anyway, um, I also don't like custard. Custard is too oh, come thick. on, too thick. It's just like, really? oh, what is the too much? All right, like great pudding. Trade. Yeah, like put pudding is pudding should be separate. Would you want pudding in your donut or your chocolate bar? I would not want that. I wouldn't mind it, yeah. <laughs> Give up Chris Olave, who's a bench player. Okay. Get Darren Waller, half PPR. No, I don't trade for injured players like Waller, and I think that one's going to linger. Big Bopper says coconuts suck and olives suck. Olives, call them out of olives are unbelievable. Let me start by saying that. Yes, like there's, there's like some it. bad olives out there. There's good and bad olives. There's bad olives are like the ones that you get on like a pizza in a pizza place, those black olives that basically I taste like, like those nothing. Too. I'm fine with those. It tastes like nothing. They're fine. Like they're just like filler. But then those good Kalamata olives that you get on like a cheese board, whew, those things taste great. They're so salty. Dan is a food snob. A hundred percent agree. David, that is such a bad take, David. I'm very open to all people's food likings, but I will criticize people who say something as ridiculous as the cookie is the reason people eat Oreos. I never said that, but also, yeah. Yes, you did. I did not say that's the reason people eat. You basically. I'm not. not, (laughs) No, we're not doing this. Ben from Connecticut. I got to fill a tight end spot and a flex. I have Pitts, Taysom Hill, and Zay Jones. Don't leave that comment up. Please take it down from David. I I honestly didn't really. (laughs) I'm sorry. Uh, (laughs) Can we change the lower third, please? The Dan is a food stop. All right. Who are you starting? Two out of three. Pitts, Taysom Hill, and Zay Jones. Pitts, Taysom Hill, Zay Jones. Two out of three. I'll just go mm, Hill. We already said that part of it. The Hill versus Pitts. And it's like Zay Jones versus Pitts. Uh, I'll just go Pitts based on upside. I'd rather swing for the fences. From Kyle, would you trade Brian Robinson for Drake London and Eno Benjamin? Brian Robinson for Drake London and Eno Benjamin. I would do that trade. Yes. Yeah, I would too. I will say this about London, though. We got really excited about him. He's an amazing talent. And the rate stats look great, but it's kind of where rate stats can be deceiving, right? He's getting a ton of targets. He has a great target share, great, but they're not throwing the football. So despite the fact that the rate stats are great, the volume isn't there. And that's really what's most important. So I still would do the trade. I just feel like I, we may have, I may have gotten a little too high on London earlier. From Rob, I traded Debo Samuel and Jeff Wilson, Debo and Wilson, two 49ers, for Aaron Jones and T. Higgins. Debo and Wilson for Aaron Jones and T. Higgins. Yeah. Wow, do I like that trade. That's a good one. I don't even think it's close. From Brandon, give up Kamara, Jamal Williams, and okay. DeAndre Hopkins. Okay. Get Brees Hall and Jalen Waddle. Ooh, I Kamara, like it. Jamal Williams and Hopkins for Brees Hall and Waddle. I like it. I like it too. Yeah. The Waddle thing's got a little scary, though, because Plus, if it's like Skylar Thompson or Teddy Bridgewater rest of the season. That changes a lot, in my opinion, on the ceiling for a Waddle and Hill type. I'm feeling like Tua will be back next week. Okay. Is there anything based on it? It's just a gut feel. Well, they keep saying he's making progress. Maybe two weeks yeah. at most. At most uh, okay. From Alexis, start two, two wide receivers and a flex. Oh, this one's so hard. It's yeah. half PPR. Gabe Davis, Cortland Sutton, Chris Godwin, and Ken Walker. That I need to tough. sit one of them. I'm not sitting Walker. Let's start by saying that. <sighs> yeah, 
It's Godwin, D- Gabe, and who was the last one? Sutton. Did I, I feel like I already read this question. No, something similar, but not this exact one. Uh, you know what? I'm going to sit. I'm going to sit Sutton. I'm going to sit Godwin. It's half PPR okay. and I'm just, just not convinced. I mean, I kind of am, but in, in this context, I'm not convinced that he's healthy enough to earn this, this spot in half PPR. Um, all right. From Patrick in a town in northern Kentucky. Uh, Springfield. Never heard of it. No. Well, the, the Simpsons, there's an episode called uh, Behind the Behind the Laughter. And they say that they're uh, from northern Kentucky, I believe. Um, all right. Hmm. Is uh, Okay. When when Jamison Williams gets back, is Amonra St. Brown a clear-cut number one, a top 15 to 20 player rest of season? Should I drop Josh Reynolds? Yes, you should definitely drop him for Jamison Williams. Yep. Is DJ Chark droppable? When DeAndre Swift returns, does that diminish their value? What is your take basically on the Alliance when healthy? Yeah, I still think the offense will operate through Amon Ross St. Brown. He has the best connection with Jared Goff. They design the layup routes for him. Goff has always targeted the slot more. But Jamison Williams, at least at first to me, is going to be kind of that field stretcher, the guy who opens up the rest of the offense from a schematic standpoint by running those burner routes. And that could change fast because he's the waddle type after the catch. And so you can hit him on quick inbreakers and he can break those. Adam say it were the inbreakers and he could break those for touchdowns. <laughs> but I think at least to start the volume rem- will remain through uh, the offense will still run through Amon Ross and Brown. This is all if Amon Ross and Brown gets healthy again. All right, we're going to read your YouTube questions here. Let's see. Uh, this one from D.C. Well, where's your question, D.C.? Yeah, we, we we will answer it, but we need a question there. You didn't uh you didn't have a question. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can address Acres again. Daryl Henderson, top twenty running back, top twenty ish. I'd start him over. Sure. I'd start him over the Bills and Chiefs running backs. I wouldn't, um, but I'm also I'm I'm a little bearish on this, which I understand. I understand. No, the you should be. I mean, they don't have a good running game. That's exactly why. Yeah, and they can't block and they can't run the football. Yeah, but last year he was a top 15 running back when before he got hurt. Right. Now, I know the situation is not the same, but also he's catching some passes. Right. So I think you'll get three catches from Daryl Henderson. I think you'll get every down work, and I have enough faith in Sean McVay that they can turn things around in a positive game script. So, sure. yeah, I, I would start Eno you know, Benjamin over him. I would start Ken Walker over him. I would start Miles Sanders over him. I'd start him, of course, over uh, Daryl Henderson. I'm talking about here. I'd start him, of course, over Zeke. Um, who else? I'd start him over the Jaguars guys. I'd start him over AJ Dillon. I'd start him over Kareem Hunt. Okay. How about pick two? Dillon, Pittman, Garrett Wilson, Algier. Dillon, Pittman, Garrett Wilson, Algier. Give me First, Pittman, yeah. Pittman and Dillon. Yeah. yeah. Would you drop AJ Dillon for DJ Moore? Wow. No. <laughs> um, I wouldn't, but I don't hate it. Would you drop Curtis Samuel to pick up Zay Jones? No. No. Would would I if I were Curtis Samuel, would I drop a 40 yard touchdown pass? Yes. <laughs> Full PPR start one. That was painful. Oy. I had the over on his yards. That literally gets it right there. Um start so, one. Oh, one wide receiver and a flex. All right. The wide oh. receivers are Deontay, Amari, London, and Olave. Is Olave gonna play? If Olave plays and Michael Thomas doesn't, I'm starting him. If Thomas plays, yes. I'm starting Amari Cooper. That's my exact take, too. I like Amari here in this spot. My flex would be Mixon for sure. Walker for me. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. You okay? Uh, yeah, something in my throat. Uh, I'm a little verklempt. No, having you a good hair. You're having a good hair day today, Adam. I'm having a great hair day. I have a good, I got a good haircut. You finally yeah. did. You got yeah. another one. The first one was so bad you had to get another. No, it just grew back. <laughs> like you have the same hair every time I see you. I don't understand. Your hair never grows. When do you how often do you get a cut? Once a year? Uh, once every three weeks. I try to keep it. Three you know, weeks. You try, to, try to keep it kept. Why? How often do you get a haircut? Five weeks. Wow, but that's five. why I look like an idiot for you know two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you never look like an idiot, Adam. Um half PBR. Christian Kirk. George Pickens, Elijah Moore, pick one. Oh, it's Kirk. Kirk, for sure. Especially with the coach speak this week. Squeaky wheel will get greased. 
I have a st- <laughs> I have a startling confession. Okay. Oh, how are that. you? About, how are you with ironing? Terrible. Yeah, terrible with bad. ironing. I hate ironing. I don't understand it. Why is it so hard? Yeah, I don't know. I do what everybody else does. I put the freaking iron on the clothes. The wrinkles don't come Everyone's out. like it's so easy, but then you go over it and you make new creases. How do you avoid the creases? <laughs> it's no way to avoid the here's creases. What you do. Here's my here's my uh, confession. I am so bad at ironing that I bring clean shirts to the cleaners and just have them like clean them. <laughs> just to have them iron it. I love you that. Clean it. I think they steam them, but <laughs> they, they steam them, yeah. them again and, and they come back nice. And, well, nice that's and always nice. been part of my strategy. Whenever I have like wrinkled clothes that I need and, and instead of ironing, I'll, I'll run it. I'll, I'll run a shower and then I'll yeah. leave the shower on for like an extra 30 minutes and just yeah, steam it's very, it's very environmentally unfriendly. Yeah, I was just going to say it's so good for the environment. Would you start CD lamb or Cortland Sutton this week? I would go with lamb. Okay. David says, I can iron. The military taught me. You know, That's David, you, you call, David goes ahead and calls me a food snob, David. But I got to be honest, some of your comments sound very condescending. <laughs> and snobby. He's a military argue. man. You lay, lay off. Yeah. Well, I, I, I appreciate and thank you, by the way, for, for yes. obviously everything you did. But, you know, you've been coming down very hard on me in recent recent streams, David. So, t- so take it easy. Take it easy. Uh, George, does he really? A couple. David David A has been a hard on me. Oh, I didn't realize which, that. Which I like. It's fine. I enjoy it all. This is all a joke. Keep coming at me, David. I enjoy the negative intention. DJ Moore or George Pickens rest of season? Oh, wow. I'd take the... To me, they're both flyers. I would go with Moore because he has more of a proven track record. Jones says, I don't iron. Just throw it in the dryer and, and warm it. Yeah, that's yeah, another, it's another that very too. good strategy. Just fire it in the dryer. Let yep. it rip. <laughs> I had so many shirts. I was like, forget this, man. I'm just- <laughs> I love that move. Just take it to the dry cleaner. It's clean. I don't care. I want you to steam it. <laughs> would okay. you trade DeAndre Swift for Stefan Diggs? Oh. Yeah. I would. A, in a second. Because I didn't- turned down. Actually, I never ended up responding. And then another trade got made involving these players. That, so oh. I did. But I was going to turn down a trade of, I would give up Diggs and Dylan for Barkley and Thielen. In a three receiver PPR league. Diggs and I think I probably on. win the trade on paper if I give up Diggs and Diggs and Dylan for Thielen and Barkley. Yeah. But like Barkley gets hurt. Right. And I couldn't give up Diggs. Like, I have a good team. I'm four and one. I don't mind that. Dan. I think they're pretty equally uh they're pretty equally valued between Diggs and Barkley. And one's a receiver, one's a running back. So you know where I'm standing on that. Here's a great question to end it. Rest of season, Chris Olave or Michael Thomas? I'm going Olave. Why would I go with the guy who's been injured already this year? Was injured in camp. Was injured for the last two years. Oil of Olave. Oil. There's a better vert. Let me let me get for you right now the better Olave name. Olave Garden. We already established. No, there's even better one. That's from Alamada Olave. No, no, no. Here we go. Here we go. Just let me get there. Kalamata Olave is a good one, uh, especially because they're so tasty. Live, laugh, Olave. That's the one. Why? Shout out Nathan Egan. Live, laugh, love. Live, yeah, laugh, Olave. Olave and love are not that similar. Olave and Ole are very similar. You know what's interesting? This guy has been known in our league to give the best, to have the best team names ever. He's going to be very disappointed when he hears this. So I'm going to, I'll be, he'll have a good retort. He's a smart guy. So I'll wait for that. <laughs> He's smarter than oh, me. Yeah. He's already up in arms about your crazy league anyway. Yes, he is. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Sunday. Good luck.